Welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. I'm your host, Thomas McNulty, and today we're talking about Edgar Rice Burroughs, 1875-1950. Another fantastic author who created Tarzan, John Carter of Mars, Carson of Venus, and many other fantastic books and characters. Now, before we get involved in talking about the books today, I want to mention that I'm not an expert on Edgar Rice Burroughs. I'm just a fan and a reader and a book collector. So, my introduction to Burroughs is not unusual. I was introduced to Tarzan, for example, in the world of Edgar Rice Burroughs via the Johnny Weissmuller films that played on television when I was a child. And I was fascinated by that. Now, Johnny Weissmuller had great charm, great great charisma. He was actually a great Tarzan. It was the scripts that were at fault. You know, they didn't really give the scripts the uh, and the character the depth that Burroughs did with Lord Greystoke in the novels. Everybody that is familiar with Burroughs and his career in the films know what I'm talking about. They kind of made um, Tarzan a bit of a, a semi-literate, which wasn't what you find in the books. What you find in the books is this amazingly intelligent, capable man, brawny guy. Weissmiller physically fit the mold. He was a, a gold medal winner in the Olympics, I think five times. So. The films have a certain charm. The books are obviously better. Now, my introduction then began in the 1960s. And here's, this is the series that I began reading. And you'll note that the, uh, this is Tarzan of the Apes. And we have Edgar Rice Burroughs in, in white and then the title. And then, so this series all had a uniform look. That wasn't unusual. As we get into this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's another, yes, I have double copies. I'm a book collector, okay? So this is the series from the early 60s that uh, I read and many others were introduced to Tarzan. And these books, I remember the first time I read this, it was just, an, what an experience. I, I was amazed at this, uh, at this book, especially because I was familiar with the Johnny Weissmuller films. So this series here, um, these were Ballantine books that had, had the contract to do these for years and these are highly collectible to this day i clearly have them um still have them all these years later that followed with when you're a book collector you know what i'm talking about that followed with the same publisher valentine later on and this is the neil adams this is tarzan of the apes tarzan of the apes so yesterday by the way neil adams did the cover on this is what i was saying yesterday my wife and i were laughing because we were looking at the collection and trying to figure out how many copies of Tarzan of the Apes do I own. All right, so I've got this one, I've got this one. So there's two. Then I've got this one. This was the later series again. Then I have this one, all right? And then I have this one. This was the Barnes & Noble actually put out an edition. And more recently, and we're going to talk about these beautiful books, the Edgar Rice Burroughs Estate recently put out a uniform set. They're starting to re reproduce them in these beautiful hardback covers. So, as you can see, I'm no stranger to Tarzan of the Apes, one of the all-time great series and one of the all-time great characters. So, this series is also, the, so these two series are the two that book collectors and vintage paperback collectors really like to look for. Neil Adams did some of the covers on this series here. Um, they were a lot of fun. I think this was a Neil Adams too, I'm not sure. Uh, so, I have the complete sets on these these two from Ballantine, um, as well as others, as you saw. Tarzan was an amazing character and remains in print to this day. We are very fortunate that that is the case, as you may have seen from the recent film, which I thought was excellent, by the way. Tarzan is one of those characters like Superman, Doc Savage, The Shadow, the Phantom Detective from the Pulp Era. Tarzan is eternal. Edgar Rice Burroughs will live forever. His books will always be in print. I can't imagine a world without Edgar Rice Burroughs and these other authors that I talk about in this series. This stuff is a lot of fun. There's a, I have a whole stack of them back here. I don't know if you can't even see them. Um, I have so much. Um, and this is just a portion of my collection. Now, book collectors know what I'm talking about. When you love a book, when you love a series, you collect different editions. So if you're a Tarzan fan, or if you have not read Tarzan of the Apes, please get to it. Now, for my money, and there's a lot of discussion on this, just my opinion, I'm a reader, I think the most important book in the series after you read the first one is 
the return of Tarzan. This introduces the princess. This introduces the, the city of gold and some other elements. And from here, I think Burroughs just took off. His imagination was ignited. And man, oh man, that's fun. A lot of fun. There are many, many other books in the series, 25, I think, 24, 25, that um, are worth reading. So if you haven't read a Tarzan novel, you need to do it. Uh, introduce yourself to the amazing world of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan. Now, because I loved the Tarzan books so much, that's what we'll concentrate on today. Burroughs obviously wrote many other books. Please avail yourself of them. Um, as a collector, many of you will remember the Whitmans from the 60s. Now, I've talked about the Whitman hardbacks before um, because they're highly collectible. And sometimes the stories were abridged and sometimes they weren't. I think that um, one of these, I don't remember which, might have been the Lost Safari. This might have been, yeah, this is from the motion picture, I think from about 60, 1966. Um, and so this was an adaptation from the film. Uh, and um, so finding the Whitman books in good condition is really um, a, sometimes a challenge. And the reason being that Whitman, as I mentioned in other episodes, and I'm going to do an episode on Whitman, collecting Whitman books. Whitman hardbacks, based out of Racine, Wisconsin, they used cheap pulp paper, to, and they were poorly put together. So they didn't hold up well, and they, they don't hold up now. So looking for these books in good condition for you book collectors is really fun. I haunt flea markets. Uh, I go to antique shops. It's amazing how many of these I've found in antique shops and so forth because people just, just, they discard these. But they're fun to collect if you're a Burroughs fan, so I do recommend that. In addition to the Whitmans, okay, there are Grasset and Dunlap reprints. So here's a Grasset and Dunlap. Now this one is in really good shape. I'm really happy to have this one. Burroughs was reprinted consistently throughout his life and continuously to this day. Now, there's some confusion over the reprints versus the first editions. I think that Burroughs was originally published with McClurg along with Zane Gray. Those are harder to find with a dust jacket. This is a first edition of The War Chief, one of his rare westerns. This is a signed copy, by the way. I don't know if you can see that on there. Yeah, I guess you can. Um, as I mentioned in other episodes, I uh, I try to get a signed copy of my favorite authors from my personal collection. I'm a book collector. So the Grasset and Dunlap, uh, I think some words need to be said about the Grasset and Dunlap reprints. During the 1930s, they really owned the market on reprints. They reprinted Zane Gray and Burroughs, and gosh, I think somewhere there's a, uh, and I think I have it in my collection, there's a, a reprint of the Maltese Falcon. Um which was almost a facsimile edition from the original um, by Dashiell Hammett. And uh, that's often, these books from Grasset and Dunlap are often mistaken for first editions. They're not. Um, they're reprints, but they're widely available. They're widely found, and they can cost you some money as well. So the Grasset and Dunlap books are, now this is a later reprint. Here is one from the 30s, so you can get an idea how easy it is to mistake these for the originals um you know pretty much it you know this sold for 75 cents uh in the in the in the 30s and 40s and it was it was pretty much a, a facsimile nearly of the original editions so people often mistake these as i said for the first editions i'm not an expert on burroughs first editions uh, i do recommend that if you're looking for something if you're uncertain to consult with Perhaps EdgarRiceBurrows.com, contact the estate, see if they can advise you on that. I think there's a bibliography page out there that gives reference to the various editions that exist. There are a lot of them, so it's very confusing. You need to be careful, but the bottom line is, you know, Burroughs is fun to collect. <clears throat> a lot of fun to collect. So even with the new editions, <clears throat> here are some newer editions that I showed you, Tarzan of the Apes. They're out there. They're a lot of fun. Um, editions also, modern editions also exist of the John Carter of Mars, which are, that's another series. That might be another episode altogether. So Burroughs has taken up a lot of my reading life, and I'm better for it, as you will be too. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at this. 
I mentioned this in the beginning. The Edgar Rice Burroughs estate has just begun republishing these uniform hardcover editions with beautiful covers by, I think it's Joe Jesco, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, these beautiful editions with some interior front piece and covers uh, are now on the market. The first four have been released. So here again, <laughs> I know, I know, book collectors can't resist this. Tarzan of the Apes, hardcover. I want, now look at these editions for you book collectors out there. Look at how beautiful these are. I'm gonna take the dust jacket off. Look at the binding on this. So this is high quality. It looks like acid-free paper and a really good sewn spine with good a good gluing and the you know, really put together well. These are books that were meant to last. So, and on the back of the dust jacket, each one has a different photo of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Beautiful covers. Take a look at this. Look at that beautiful cover. So, the first four are on the market. Seek these out. I am so excited about this because um, these books make a wonderful addition to your home your home library they really are beautiful not only that but they're fun to read they're accessible to you know teenagers on up they're fun look at the return of tarzan look at that saucy cover now it's saucy but it's not you know it's not blatant it's it's just beautifully painted and the third one the beast of tarzan look at this i just love these editions and i love this photo on the back by the way of burroughs with the um, pipe in his mouth. Isn't that something? Um, you know, book collectors love this stuff. I'm a book collector as well as an avid reader. And here is The Son of Tarzan, another stunning, stunning cover artwork from uh, Joe Jesco. And look at the on the back. So this is a set. They're going to do 24, I believe. The 24 volumes will be reprinted, and I'm buying them all. Yeah, I know, you know book collectors and readers do this this is what we do and it's a lot of fun to do this now I encourage you to seek these out edgarricebarrels.com again if you're not sure on what editions to buy start right here invest in these editions these are the collector's items that people in 50 years if not sooner are going to be wishing they had in their library this is beautiful and they're fun to read that's right look at that so the typesetting is clean you know, I mean, it's just a perfect addition as far as I'm concerned. And as a lifelong book collector, uh, I think um, I'm not an expert. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to stress that. But uh, I'm an enthusiastic fan and reader, and uh, this is stuff that I love. I am all in favor of the um, stories and novels and novellas from the pulp era to be reprinted. So Tarzan from 1912 to now, Edgar Rice Burroughs lives forever. I think Ray Bradbury said something like that, too. Be sure to check out my Ray Bradbury uh, episode. So uh, this is something I wanted to point out today because th they've just begun this. The four are here, and you cannot go wrong. This is fantastic. So with that said, stay well, stay happy, feed your brain, and read a book. And you know what? As a matter of fact, I think I have some reading to do, if you don't mind. I'm going to reread Tarzan of the Apes for probably the 12th time. You have a nice day.